uh, Roxy, maybe you can put your spin on it. Uh, when you read this article in Harvard Business Review, uh, what did you agree with most? Um, I definitely, I, I agree in, in terms of a general corporate culture that all of those components are essential, but I do think that it is a bit different for sales. And one of the most important things for me, and it, it's really about how the leadership ties into all, all the culture shenanigans and, and how all of the promises or, or visions and missions really tie up with the practices and that that really creates an environment of uh, engaged employees and um, really driven salespeople. Well, you know, Roxy, that's a good one because if you think about it, especially in sales, if, it's, if a culture isn't modeled by the leader, and if it's not lived by the sales team, and somehow it's not measured either formally or informally, or it's some false promise or some aspiration that they talk about but never live, then you get into the good Dilbert cartoon culture stuff where everybody says, well, this is just a joke. The leader says this is going on, but the real thing is we actually do this. And so that's, that's why we say culture is either there by design or by default. And as a leader, I think your job is to make it by design and create that environment that's going to drive performance. Otherwise, it's whatever exists because everyone has a culture whether they know it or not. And the sales organization is notorious for having uh, just high turnover because just of the nature of the role. And nowadays you have um, public sources like Glassdoor.com where it's kind of the Yelp of every organization. And people go there when they're job searching and when they're looking uh, where, where to go and where to send their resume. So it is really important because um, it's all public. It's all public. So for the leadership to be um, involved in, in following through. Well, I think you're right. An example, I have one of my clients has 40% turnover in their inside sales force right now. And they wanted to hire us to do a training initiative to help get all the new people trained up. And they don't have a skill problem, they have a culture problem. So it goes back to your point earlier around high turnover or low employee engagement, which are all parts of culture. To us, there's a culture move to make before you make a talent move. So I would be very interested to hear your thoughts on how the corporate culture impacts sales training and sales leadership. Well, two good questions, and I'll start with sales leadership. So if you think about it, we believe a leader's job is to create the environment for their people to succeed. So a sales leader needs to create a set of circumstances by which all their folks are going to be successful. So if you think about it, then, if you don't have the environment for people to succeed, why would you make a talent or skill move to put people in an environment that's just going to impede their success? So we always start with strategy. What's the go to market? Who's your target client? How are you going to differentiate? What's your plan? And then we look at the environment. Are you setting your people up to succeed? And that's all those organizational systems and processes and stories and rituals. And if that's clear and tight and aligned, then you can start making some talent moves of which training could be just one move within a whole spectrum of how you're going to move the needle. And one of the things that can be extremely problematic for an organization is to have a disconnect between um, corporate expectations and then the resources and the support and training that is actually available for folks. So you definitely need to align those two. Well, let me, can I add something to that, Roxy? I think, I think the other thing that happens is even if a company has a clear sales strategy and if they know the kind of culture they want to create to execute that strategy, I think they still make a lot of training mistakes. And I think the mistake they make is they don't start with what's the business metric that we want to move and how far do we want to move it and does sales leadership and company leadership agree with the value of moving it and then treating that move as a change initiative instead of a training event. Can you give us an example, Tris? Sure. We, we have a client and we get calls all the time. And they say, hey, we'd like to run a three-day solution selling workshop in Europe. We really need some help. Can you help us? And we say, sure. What are your sales now and what do you want them to be? And sadly enough, a large percent of the time a client can't answer that question, they've been asked to run some sales training over some corporate retreat events, and, it, and we know based on the 800 projects we've measured, it doesn't do anything. So the conversation we really want to have is, all right, what are you trying to move? Revenue, win rate, deal size, sales cycle, 
And then training skills is only going to be one lever to make it happen. You need coaching, you need reinforcement, it needs alignment with the culture, and it needs alignment with the strategy. So you're, you're saying that um, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice? Yeah, at, at best. And I think the training industry is just the worst for it. it. It still surprises me in this day and age that people will still ask for things without a, an outcome that they're held accountable to that impacts the business. So Tris, tell me how should sales leaders think about aligning sales strategy with sales training? Well, we would, we would do it sequentially and we'd start with strategy and the real big question to ask is, is your sales strategy clear enough to act? Do people believe in it? Are they behind it? Does it make sense? And is the strategy up to the challenge of what you're trying to achieve? If you get yeses to those big questions, then we then we look at your sales environment or culture next. Is it enabling your strategy? Are you setting up your people to succeed? If the answers to that are yes, then we look at training and we'd start with what's the metric you want to move? How far do you want to move it? And when they get agreement on that, we would look at current skill sets and measure the correlations of those skills to the metric you're trying to move and then try to close the gap. So it's it's very targeted, it's very scenario based, it's not a sheep dip, let's run everyone through a three day sales training. There might only be two or three scenarios that are going to make a difference for your sales team. What you're really saying is that we have all an ideal image in our minds of what reality should look like, but we have a very hard time finding that in reality. Well, I think, you know, I think one of the tricky things with culture is people make assumptions about good and bad culture. So. You know, you and I were talking about Oracle the other week. Now, their, I think their sales culture is very effective. It's very aligned with their strategy, and it works. It's not a culture that I would want to be part of. So are you saying that uh, they don't hire chickens? I'm just saying it's, it's a very cutthroat, competitive culture, which would not be one as a sales leader that I would want to set up as a, a sustainable success in the kind of place I would want to work. But that doesn't mean it's a bad culture or that it doesn't help them execute their strategy. So, Carolyn, how does corporate culture impact uh, sales training and sales leadership? It impacts directly because, first of all, the kind of sales leader that will have been employed in an organization will depend on the corporate culture and what the corporate culture and corporate strategy wants to achieve with the sales organization. So, the way that that leader carries out their sales strategy and the way that they manage their team will be dictated by their profile, by their preferences, by their behavior preferences. And they are going to do, to a lot of, to a great extent, judge the skill sets that they have on their own and how they perceive the growth path for the guys that are working with them. So it, as Tris said earlier on, you can, you can really miss the mark with it. You can really miss the mark because you've got somebody who has been employed in an organization because he or she fits the organization rather than somebody who can move a group of people forward who may have very different needs from a leader 